What is happening, Adventure Nation? I've returned from Las Vegas. I'm back here in Houston, and we are ready to rock and roll again. I wanna thank everyone down at Picarso. Again, you guys rock. They are the people that allow us to get out and do what we're doing. So really appreciate those guys. Today, we are going to hit the Houston RV show. This is the Motorhome Experiment. All right, ready to hit the RV show? More than ready. Cool, so we're gonna show you guys some really neat stuff. Stick around. Okay, I've been filming this building here behind me thinking that this was the NRG Center where we were going to the RV, RV show. show. And then I just realized, that's the Houston Astrodome. That's a cool building there. Now this is the NRG Center. This is actually where we're going to the RV show. That's actually where everybody around here is. And everybody <laughs> is going here, yes. All right, you guys know that I've been fanboying on Texas, that I'd just been loving Texas. But literally, since we left El Paso, Texas, we haven't really been traveling on the freeways. So what we discovered this morning, and over the last couple of days here in Texas, driving to and from the airport, is that drivers here in Texas absolutely suck. What Thank is you. up with driving in the left lane here, gang? Driving 101, drive on the right, pass on the left. It was really annoying coming here today. So, my first little pet peeve about Texas. Okay, so we're in fact really close, but there's a huge cheerleading convention going on right now, and we are not part of that. So we're heading down to Hall C to try and find the RV show, where I'm assuming the crowd is gonna change quite significantly as we get down there. Maybe a little older, probably. <laughs> Now we're in the right place. Okay, we found Hall C and we now are in fact in the RV show. And yes, as we expected, the crowd changed quite a bit. It got much older and much redneckier. You know it's true, you know it's true. So now we're trying to find some friends that are here already and then we're going to check out some class A's for you. We have a lot of people talk to us about the Thor Outlaw. We should have a toy hauler, you have to have one. So we're going to take a look at one right now so and give you our thoughts on yeah. why this isn't for us. This is a class A, uh, how do you call it's it? A class toy A hauler. toy hauler is basically and what the Outlaw is. this is the first is. thing we don't like. Yeah. Too long. One year, it says it's a 37 RB. I'm assuming it's probably close to 40 feet long. So, Lori, uh, so give us your thoughts. So, first of all, when you have a garage space that is a toy hauler, you're giving up space. You're like giving up that space somewhere else. And here is a couch. You're giving up the couch. Like you hi have hi. Uh, you have a dinette, but you don't really have a place to sit and watch TV. That's your dinette, basically. Right. Uh, also, the pantry. I don't see a pantry here. When you're full timing, you need a pantry. There's got to be a pantry somewhere. I don't see a pantry. No. So yeah, again, it's more of a weekender. The kitchen is not bad. No, the kitchen is really nice. Look, look here. It doesn't even have a... There's your pantry. There you go. That not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's for a weekend <laughs> or a week. Spices. That's nice spice rack. Does it tell you the length? Because they don't want you know. to. Um, so one thing is like this doesn't have a pantry. So where you carry all your food, that's one thing. Unless you're extremely right. minimalist. <laughs> the front's nice. Like where where you're sitting up here. The front is kind of like. The like front every other is nice. Coach, it's yeah. pretty much yeah, like every other coach. It's really nice. It does have the overhead bunk, which is cool. I have to say the kitchen larger than mine, so that's, that's a plus sure. for sure. Residential fridge. Residential fridge. This is 2017, so this has the 
newest upgrades. Bathroom storage, very large, so that's good. And, and shower separate here the shower, nice. yeah. Any shower, I don't know if you can actually. Like if I close this, you don't have too much room. You have to be sideways. <laughs> I don't know if Paul can fit. <laughs> Let me take a quick look in the bathroom here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, this is nice. Lots of storage. So this is the master bedroom. This is a queen size and that's your closet over there. That is a pretty good size for me. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. And up there is a loft bed. Spare bed? Yeah. You go up there. Alright, I'll go I've, up here with the I've camera. Seen it so if you've got uh, kids or teenagers or something like that, they can crawl up here. Or if you're just agile enough, that's not bad. We're gonna have to wait a little bit. It's all right, go ahead, shoot. Hmm? Go for it. Oh, so this is a positive about this, the outlaw. You have this area, you can make in more beds, you can make in an office, a garage. I don't think you can fit a car in here, but you can fit a motorcycle. Uh -huh. You can fit probably a small car, maybe. And then you have the and patio. And then you pack this into a lake, into the ocean, into the woods. I mean, this is great. This is awesome. Yeah, so you have... <clears throat> having this big patio out here is really cool. Like she said, if you back up to a lake or a river or something like that, then yeah, you have all kinds of room out here. But you're giving up so much of your actual living space inside. So when you're full-time, it's really important. Yeah, you've got this out here. We could turn this into a an office space or something like that. But it's really, to be honest, is a complete waste of space for the type of travel that we do. And it's too long. I mean, just pull a car behind this massive thing, it just gets too long. And to fit into place, there's boondocking sometimes. It's just hard. Yeah, you're at 30, 37 RB is what it's called. I'm assuming it's like 38, 39, probably closer to 40 feet. You drop a car on the back of that. Now you're 60 feet long and it is a lot of RV. Now. If you have a class A, this is always a dilemma. Every spot you go, even if it's ocean or lake, you have to back in to the spot. So your windshield, that is your view, is usually facing the road. That's always like a negative. So the nice thing about this one is like, even if you back in, you can open and turn right. back and have a patio looking the super nice view. Right, if you're at the ocean or something yeah, like that. So absolutely. that's extremely nice. So that's so really cool about If this. you want it for leisure, maybe not full timing, and you don't have tow vehicles, something like that, you're using it for a weekend stuff, going to the lake, bicycles, this is a great way to do it. For full timing, you're giving up a lot of the actual living space. That is your space, where you work, is where you live, where you cook, where you hang out, where you watch a movie. And yeah. I don't think we are willing to sacrifice that. We're just not, for the and having a Harley right now, gang, is just not in the yeah, cards for us. So, yeah. not yeah, not a I good option for that. us. A great yeah. option if you're weekending or maybe a week or something like that. Or you're extreme minimalist. Right, extreme <laughs> minimalist. Not so much for us for the full time. So that's our take on the outlaw. The outlaw. One more thing I will say about the Thor Outlaw is that and that we didn't address in there is if you put a motorcycle or an ATV or something like that in the back, it is going to stink the coach up of gas and rubber and oil. No matter what you do, that patio door is there to block the living space, but you're always going to have that smell if you park a hot vehicle inside of that coach and then have to go drive somewhere. So even if you're maybe say you're parking a mini in there or something like that that you're using as your tow car, if you park, park it in there hot, you're gonna have those smells in the coach and that's not gonna be fun for long fit periods a small of time. Car there. No, I think you can fit a small car. You think? Yeah, hmm. you can, we'll have to measure that. Patricio's getting his shake on. Uh, 
Okay, we don't have a fifth wheel, but we love the fifth wheels. This particular one is 2016 RV of the year. Really cool layout, so check this thing out. So you're gonna have to give us a little bit of commentary here, Lori. So we have never seen one with the kitchen up on a different level. They don't wanna see me, they wanna see her. <laughs> your bar area. No pantry. You got no, no pantry. pantry. We need to okay, count, like, right, talk. So normally, like, this kitchen is huge because it's an L-shaped kitchen, and you have your double sink to wash dishes. You have an area to chop, and your full stove and all that. So two thumbs up. Plus, look at that. You can use that for your pantry, like all your stuff. Dinette. It actually has a lift to make the table a lot larger but it's an amazing space like back in the nook you have a, a window so you can see outside wherever you're parked you can see the outdoors so that's totally a plus so you don't feel confined so I can see why this one RV of the year and this is in the higher level you go down the steps and then you go into the living area Yeah, a little different layout with the kitchen up top. Yeah. Huh. Oh, look at how the dining room is set. And now we're in the living room. And the nice thing about this one, it has like a conversation area. It has three couches. Like you see one, two, and behind there's another one. Huge TV. And the nice fireplace. So, it's amazing. But look at the ceiling. It's just huge. Let's go to the bedroom. Let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, this has one of the doors I love. It opens. It just saves so much room when you open it. Right, the way, way the door opens. Yeah. <laughs> and look at this. It's almost like a residential bathroom. We have a composing toilet, so one thing we always pay attention to is where the bathroom is. And this one is on the floor. The composting toilet, because it has to hold tanks for number one, number two, it's always higher. So you always have to find something that is on the ground. Otherwise, you need that step stool, like a little kit, or your feet are going to just mm -hmm. be... It's painful. a good size shower, right? Yeah. Good size shower, good elbow room. Nice storage, too, on the sink. Cool. Now uh, let's go to the bedroom. I just wanted to peek in here. Yeah, that's okay. In. No, you can go in. Did you, did you, did you look good in that shower? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Close the bathroom. Bedroom, king size. Oh my god, glory. We don't have king size, queen size, so we have to fight for space at night. <laughs> and he has a his and hers closet, so they're separated. That that's pretty cool. TV, lots of drawers in tiny teeny night stands but it's not bad one thing if you're thinking about full timing it didn't happen with us do you see those two windows on each side of the bed they're great for cross breeze because sometimes if it's hot outside it's hot inside in the rv you need that breeze to be able to survive and what i like is having that on the back so that you got something to lean up against rather than the windows and exactly. jamming up on the curtains and stuff and these are here very nice storage, but you can put the washer dryer here. A combo washer dryer. Yep. So it's extremely spacious. So thumbs up. Thumbs up for this one. If you're looking into full timing, very doable. Let's see how many people can fit in here. It's tiny, but has essentials. It has the kitchen with everything you need, except for storage. You have the wet bath. Wet bath, probably? Yep. Yeah. Oh, don't shut that yet. Oh. Do they get it? Yeah. 
the wet bath and then you have your couch slash bed. And it also has a it also has a back door so you can access storage. So if you want to put bicycles in or something like that, you can actually do that too. Oh, this one's a Tommy Bahama special edition. Ooh. Ooh. Lori, yeah. this is a Tommy Bahama special edition. Oh, this is a perfect time to come in and shoot. There's nobody. All right. The Tommy Bahama special edition. This is the Airstream. There you go. Bathroom. You know, back in here. To where the action takes place of course if you're single then if you're married then that wouldn't be the case uh, let's get hey guys. oh no you guys are all right you're all right no you're all right so this is your couch slash dining table yep and not bad if you like that sort of thing but here now I'm gonna I'm gonna come over and we're gonna talk to an insurance we're gonna talk to an insurance expert. So, Rafa, expert. beautiful RV here, Airstream, and what do you think about hail damage? Hail damage will kill this thing. Uh, <laughs> there is nothing that will be done to it that you could repair it. It would be totaled out with one good hailstorm. So the next time you think you're air, air, think of buying an Airstream, think about that. Think about hail damage. If you live in an area like Houston or uh, El Paso or anywhere where there might be hail, it's toast. <laughs> the hail stream. <laughs> a hail stream. Oh. And Lori, so what area are we in now? Are we in the area of coaches we cannot afford? Yeah, like this one here. Yeah, two hundred eighty-three thousand. And the the average in here is probably yet though. We will eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we'll never own one of these because they're too big and we can't do the kind of camping we, we like to do. A, we will have a hard time moondocking with this one. We will be like, oh, what if you get scratched? Stuff like that. Like everyone does on the channel. Oh, I can't take my DP up there. Yeah, but maybe this one we retire. There we go. Future. See, the problem with coming into a $200,000 plus coach is that I just want to go back to our RV and pour gasoline on it and light a match. <laughs> no, Paul, oh, no. I, I might have to. Don't, don't you do that. <laughs> Luckily, there is no wine storage in this coach, so Lori doesn't like it. All right, so this is uh, the last of the RV show. We didn't really film anything. We kind it's of just like... It's so hard to know exactly what to film. It's like trailers or fifth wheels or class A, short class A, big class A. We know that everybody's gonna have a different opinion on yeah. what they wanna see, so we just filmed a couple things, had a little bit of fun and hung out here. But if you're looking at doing an RV at some point in the near future, I really recommend that you come and do one of these shows because you, everything and anything that you could want or possibly need is gonna be here, from the trailers to the big class A's. And you're gonna find it all here in one shot so you can really do some great comparison shopping as far mm -hmm. as you know what it is that you really like. So yes. that's, uh, that's what we recommend you do. So we're gonna call it for the day so that we can go have a little bit of fun Appreciate you guys watching. It would be awesome if this is your first time here watching the channel that you subscribe. Stay up to date on everything we're doing. We've got some fun stuff coming up, as always. Yeah, like the video, make some comments, and we love having you guys around. We'll see you again soon in another one. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye.